Jesus said to the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith in me as well. In God's house, there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you, and then I will come back to take you with me, that where I am, there you may be as well. You know the way that leads to where I am going. Thomas replied, but we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I myself am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No one comes to Abba God but through me. The word of God. of Gary Spokes, whether you are here in person with us at St. John's or online, as many are today. We've heard some very familiar readings in our liturgy today, but very powerful ones. They are often chosen for funerals and memorial services, and with good reason. If you happen to see the funeral and the commitment services for Queen Elizabeth this past week, we've heard two of these readings. Speaking of Queen Elizabeth, after her death, we all heard many tributes to her long decades of service and her sense of duty. And although Gary and the late queen were very different people, <laughs> we both have no jokes about queens, uh, those were two things that they certainly shared. Gary was a member of our community for more than 42 years and one of our most faithful and hardworking volunteers. For many of us, he was the first person we met at Dignity, maybe as we came in a little nervously, as he greeted us at the front door and handed us a name tag. He faithfully sent us birthday cards, sympathy cards, religiously themed refrigerator magnets, which Jim and I have a wonderful collection. <laughs> we love them. For decades, he produced our weekly bulletins and our scriptural commentaries. He served in our AIDS ministry and as the chair of our elections committee. He was also a longtime member of the Defenders, Dignity's Leather Levi office, and his vest is over there on the, uh, the small stand. Gary was an expert on our history and our bylaws, the person we always consulted if we ever had a question about the way things had been done or were supposed to be done. <laughs> We have missed Gary greatly since his sudden passing, as Lewis said, at Christmas time this past year. Because of the pandemic, we have not been able to formally gather to remember him and celebrate his many gifts until now. But I think we can all feel his presence here among us. On this bright and sunny pulpit. in a community he loved deeply and was an anchor of his life. But the greatest anchor of Gary's life was his profound and abiding faith, and that is why the timeless readings from today's liturgy are so personally appropriate for him. They all go to the core of his faith, 
by promising us, promising us in different ways that death is not the end, that it does not have the final word. From the Hebrew scriptures, the Song of Songs proclaims that love is as strong as death and that it burns like a mighty flame. The second reading from the book of Revelation speaks to us of a new heaven and a new earth, of reality transformed, of everything made new by God. In the gospel reading from John, Jesus himself tells us not to let our hearts be troubled, that in God's house there are many dwelling places, and that we will all ultimately join him there. As human beings, it can be very difficult for us to accept these assurances, because we are asked to believe in things that we cannot see or touch or verify by science. As Thomas says to Jesus, but we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus answers, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to Abba God but through me. So what Jesus is saying, at least as I see it, is that we don't need to worry about understanding fully, about knowing the way. We only need to follow him as best we can. And that is what will bring us to God as we pass into the next life. But as we look at Gary's life, we see that he also experienced God's holy power of transformation during his time here on earth. Born in a small town in Michigan in 1938, he was forced to live his early life in the closet, like almost all LGBTQ people of that time. But as he once told me, his parents somehow found out he was gay and wanted to put him into psychiatric treatment. When Gary confided this to a high school counselor, who he later learned was a closeted lesbian, she persuaded his parents that this was not necessary. After Gary graduated from high school, he was determined to find a more accepting place to live. And the only way he could afford to get there was by hitchhiking. <laughs> he went to a nearby highway and decided he would take the first long distance truck ride that came along. If it was traveling west, he would go to San Francisco. If it was traveling east, he would come to New York. So we know which way that truck was going. <laughs> in his early years in New York, Gary had many different jobs, including working as a bouncer at gay clubs and helping to paint the murals at the Pierre Hotel. Two very different ends of the hospitality industry that, <laughs> that he continued to work in for many years. He also taught management at Case University for many years. In the early 1980s, he also wrote a column on AIDS for the now defunct gay newspaper, the New York City News. I'd like to close with a tribute to Gary written by Robert Brandy, a member of our community who unfortunately couldn't be with us here today in person, but he is with us on Zoom. Um, and there will be an opportunity for others at the close of liturgy to speak briefly if you would like to. But Robert wrote, <clears throat> Gary was such a steadfast and loyal member of our church. He gave and gave of his time and energy until the end. I don't think it is wrong to say that we are still trying to fill the gap left by him in volunteering 10 months later. He was a faithful son of dignity. We all know he certainly had opinions and he could be a bit cantankerous at times, but he not once left his post over. He never let annoyance or disagreement separate him from our community. He was committed. Gary, being at the table, was almost as reliable as the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. I am very grateful for his service, his role, his knowledge of our bylaws and history, and his perspective. The dignity legend that he was a bouncer at the spike or the mine shaft during their heydays lent so much street cred or realness to our queer religious community. I am absolutely certain who will be working the door and checking me in with my name tag when it's my turn to see him again. There are many people who I look forward to, reuniting, to reuniting them in the next world, but it is my dear hope that Gary is the first one to greet me once I walk through that door. <clears throat> May perpetual light shine upon our brother Gary. May he be welcomed into the vestibule of the divine presence, as he so often put it, and may he rest in peace.